Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. When people are breeding boas, they tend to get really excited and just focus on the positives. They just discuss the positives, the great things that happen when they breed boas. But there are also a lot of risks and downsides as well, which is what I'm gonna to touch on today. Specifically, I'm gonna talk about something called retained products of conception. And I've recently had a few experiences with this over the years, I should say, not really recently. Uh, so please stay tuned if you're planning to breed your boas or you're just interested. This is something that's important to understand about the boa hobby. So I wanted to start by just saying that breeding boas is not a decision to be made lightly and you should really really think about whether you want to breed or not and what the downsides are as well as the upsides before you enter into a breeding project. I've talked a lot about this in some of my previous videos but today I want to touch on a specific downside that can occur and it has happened to me a couple times which I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's probably happening a lot more common than you probably want to think about. Most breeders don't like to talk about the downsides. They don't report the negative data, the litters that don't turn out so good, just because it's not something people like to talk about. It makes them feel bad, it makes them feel like they're doing something wrong. But really, breeding boas, there's a lot of luck involved. Things can go wrong. Things will go wrong uh, eventually if you breed enough boas. So if you really, really care about a prize boa and you want to have absolutely no risk whatsoever to it, it's probably best that you don't breed it. And this is especially true for females. And I'm gonna you know, talk about one reason why in this video. And one of my favorite sources for information about all aspects of breeding boas and pythons as well is The Reproductive Husbandry of Pythons and Boas, which still is probably the best book you can get on breeding boas, even though it's about 30 years old. And even though some of it is a little bit obsolete and it would be great if there was an updated version, it's still a great reference. And they have a chapter on disorders of uh, pregnancy and reproduction, and they have a section on retained products of conception. And so basically, retained products of conception can be either eggs that haven't been laid, if in the case of a python, or slugs which haven't been passed, in the case of a boa, or embryos that are undeveloped or partially developed in a boa. And sometimes what happens if a female um, goes through some issues with giving birth, she won't pass all of these during giving birth and they're still stuck inside of her and you know sometimes she can't get them out so that's what's meant by a retained product of conception so if this happens it needs to be taken seriously you can probably tell that this is a possibility if your boa has delivered a partial litter or you know some young and or slugs but it still looks like she's got some inside of her and you know maybe she's trying to push them out but can't get any out or you know eventually she just gives up trying um, so that's something you have to really take seriously. Sometimes another sign that you have this going on is that the female won't feed after giving birth. So she passes a litter, things look okay, but now she's not feeding. And that's definitely a sign that maybe something's going on. So it needs to be taken seriously. There's a number of possible outcomes. If there are undeveloped embryos in there that are retained and they, they're not passed, eventually they're probably gonna to start to decompose and probably lead to sepsis or infection. And unfortunately, the, the outcome prognosis for the female bow is pretty grave at this point, and she's probably not gonna make it. In the case of slugs, often what happens is they um, become lithified or basically calcified. They kind of turn into stone, so to speak. This can happen with the embryos as well. And then they're kind of um, stuck in there. Usually at that point, it's very difficult for them to be passed uh, you know, naturally. You know, they can still be removed surgically, but pretty much they just stay there. And at this point, the female is probably not going to be able to reproduce anymore. But chances are she should go on and live a healthy life and other than that she can't reproduce. Um, in some cases, the females will actually pass the slugs and or retained embryos later on, anywhere from days to weeks to months. I recently had an experience with a female passing retained slugs, which I'm gonna to get to in a minute. But then yet another outcome is that the female can have another litter, you know, a year or two later, and she can pass some of the old slugs at that point. And I've actually had litters before where it appeared that there were living babies as well as fresh slugs and some slugs 
that look like they possibly have been retained. And you can tell this because the fresh slugs have this kind of nice bright orangey brownish appearance. The retained slugs look different. They look kind of cloudier and a little bit darker. It's pretty easy to tell the difference. Uh, the shape's a little bit different, but sometimes the female can pass them a couple years later. So if your female does retain some slugs, it might be a you know bad thing, it might not be so bad. Uh, sometimes you unfortunately can't tell, but again, this is one of the risks of breeding boas. So I had an experience with a female that retained some slugs early on in my breeding career, about 10 years ago. It was actually a Suriname female that I had paired up. Of course, this is not a female, and this is obviously isn't the same animal. Uh, this is my male named Mr. Pink, if you're interested. But I had paired up this female with another male, and she looked like she was gravid, and she was uh, due to give birth, and then the day came and went, and a few days later she started passing what looked like slugs, but they were kind of uh, fragmented. Um, you know, I didn't have nearly as much experience back then, so I didn't quite know what was going on. But I went to some of the forums online, most notably the Reptile Insider Forum, which used to be a great source for BOA-related information. Unfortunately, with Facebook, these forums have pretty much gone away, so we don't have that resource anymore. But I got a lot of information from the Reptile Insider Forum. So I went there, I described what was going on, asked my question and got you know a lot of answers. I went also, I found a local vet that d deals with reptiles. This was the only reptile vet I could find in my area at the time, uh, you know, so I went to see him. And basically I told him what was going on, showed him my boa, and um, I was a little, there were a couple of red flags about this vet. The first thing is it, he didn't know that boas laid, uh, gave birth to live young. He thought they laid eggs, which that's a pretty shocking thing. Imagine if you thought a cat laid eggs. Would you take your cat to this vet? I, I certainly would. Anyway, he I described what was going on. Uh, he had a few books he looked through, and he said, "Yeah, you know, I will watch. I think we should watch what's going on with your boa, and then we might need to do surgery." And so I said, "Well, have you done this surgery before?" And he was a little reluctant to really tell me. So it seemed like he hadn't done this. But he had assured me he knew an expert who would advise him, and he make he you know he make a, a call to this expert, and so it looked a little bit sketchy. So he advised me in the meantime I should soak the bow in warm water. Hopefully she'll pass the um, the slugs and maybe be a little bit better. He was basically concerned that the presence of the slugs would prevent her from. Uh, digesting food and eliminating the feces and that would lead to all kinds of issues of course. So I took her home and started soaking her and it didn't really seem to help. Um, but you know I, I, I continued to do this for a few for about, about a week or two. She seemed to be at least stable and I think she ha she ate a couple meals. So at that point I felt like well maybe it's not such a bad thing. You know we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. And I talked to the vet again, and he said, yeah, we probably should hold off on the surgery for now, which was kind of a relief to me. It also, he told me basically he would be removing her ovary and oviducts, you know, basically he would be spaying the boa, you know, so there'd be absolutely no chance of forever reproducing again, which I really didn't want to do that either. Not to mention the risk to the boa. So anyway, at the time I was dealing with this vet, I went to the Reptile Insider Forum, related my story, asked what people thought and there were quite a few people on there that had a lot of boa breeding experience and all of them told me yeah we don't do the surgery it's just not worth the risk and the main thing they were concerned about is that if there was something already going on as far as an infection you know opening up the animal you know cutting open its abdomen to uh, to do the surgery is going to expose it to all kinds of pathogens it's going to make any kind of underlying infection much worse and chances are very good that the animal would not survive the surgery. So I, I didn't do the surgery and you know I kind of agree with that as much as I was bummed out about not being able to do anything. Um, that's just the reality. And unfortunately in this case the animal seemed to be doing better for a week or two and then she succumbed and I you know I found her in her cage she was you know dead. So unfortunately it seems in this case there was probably something going on 
as far as you know, on the inside that I didn't see with an infection or you know maybe one of the embryos in there was kind of decomposing and ultimately it led to a systemic infection and she didn't survive. So that was a really difficult experience to go through and really made me think twice about whether I wanted to breed boas anymore because it's it's just an emotional roller coaster and there's a lot of things that can potentially go wrong. So I hadn't had anything like that happen for quite some time and then last year 2022 something like it happened again and it involved this animal. This is a 2017 female Tarhi Maraboa that was born here and that I grew up as a breeder and so I paired her up for the first time in 2022. Uh, she was just under five years old. Based on her age and size she was ready to go and I actually paired up another 2017 female, her sister, that I had held back and you know they both became gravid. Uh, they both had litters. You know the first female I think it was like six or seven baby who wasn't a huge litter which isn't that unusual for the Tarahumaras especially the first time around but then this female looked like she was gravid and she gave birth to two babies and then it looked like she had, was trying to push things out but wasn't able to um, you know so of course it, that terrible sign makes as a breeder it's the worst thing that you can have happen and I could see that she still had some stuff inside of her so what I did was I soaked her, I, you know, I tried to get the eggs or the uh, slugs to come out. Sometimes you can kind of massage them gently, but in this case it wasn't possible and you know, nothing seemed to be working. But she seemed to be fairly stable and then she started eating again shortly after and it looked like she would be okay even though she still had this bulge in, the, you know, in her abdomen towards her tail, which was you know, whatever had been retained was still inside of her. So about two months or so went by and I was cleaning the cage and I noticed something that looked like a slug. And it was kind of a surprise, but it looked like she had passed one of the slugs. So I you know, made note of that, of course, in my records. And then about maybe two months later, I saw another one in the enclosure. Uh, you know, so at that point I thought, well, this is good. You know, she's passing the slugs on her own. This is you know, the best possible outcome that could have happened in this situation. And at that point, I thought she was probably done because her abdomen looked like it was back down to normal. Um, you know, no swelling. But then about a month or so later, it looked like she was a little bit swollen again. I thought she just had to defecate and you know, needed to relieve herself. You know how sometimes boas will go two weeks or three weeks between pooping. Um, but then, just last week, I was cleaning her enclosure, and what do I find? But this, and this is a slug. I believe this is the last of them because I don't see any swelling. When I gently palpate her abdomen towards her tail, it feels I don't feel any kind of swelling at all, and just a nice normal feeling uh, for a boa. So I'm hopeful that at this point she is completely back to full health. Uh, you know, about the best possible outcome. You know, and I'd heard that boas sometimes will pass retained slugs later on. You know, I hadn't experienced it myself. I didn't know anybody who I had. So it's really good to see that this is possible. And if your boa does have an issue like this going on, you don't necessarily need to risk having surgery when sometimes they can pass them on their own anyway. And so you might think this is kind of disgusting. I'm playing with this old slug that came out of my boa's uh, cloaca. But actually it's pretty um, innocuous looking. You can see how dark it looks. If this was a fresh slug it would be much brighter orangey brown color. And it's a little bit rubbery. It kind of feels harder than uh, a fresh slug feels. Uh, but you know good thing that she passed this and now she can go on to full recovery so Right now she looks almost back to normal as far as her weight She's put on quite a bit of weight since having that uh, the litter and these slugs that she eventually passed I'm not sure if I'm gonna breed her again next year um, Probably not to be honest just based on what happened the first time around and I probably have other female Tarahumaras that will be ready to go so I'll probably, you know, wait and not sure if I'll breed her in the future, maybe a few years from now, but I'll just have to see. And, you know, if you had told me, I, you know, give me a crystal ball 
ahead of the breeding season and I knew that this would be the outcome, of course I wouldn't have bred her. But there's really nothing about her condition at the time she went into breeding that indicated that there was any risk any higher than any other boa. So sometimes you just have to put the pairs together, you have raise the bows as best you can, condition them to the optimal condition. But after that, it's a bit of a risk and these things can and will happen, especially if you breed boas long enough. If you wanna do your best to try to minimize the odds of something like this happen, you want to make sure that your females especially are old enough and large enough to breed. They should be typically for most locality boas at least four if not five years old and they should be approaching the full size. They should be in really good shape as far as their body condition, not overweight but have enough energy reserves so they can take them through the breeding and they're not gonna get tired and not be able to pass those slugs. Uh, and you should also, if you ever have any doubts about a female, whether she's ready to go or not, trust me, don't risk it. Wait another year, get her in better shape. You know, in the long run, it's well worth it because you really don't want to lo risk losing a boa because it can be a really awful thing to go through, especially if it's due to your own uh, choice to put that boa into breeding trials. But ultimately, breeding any animal is going to be a risk, especially for the females. So this is just something you have to be aware of if you do decide to breed boas. So I hope this video was helpful and somewhat thought-provoking. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.